You're mine. <laughs> Welcome everybody to the next episode of Worlds Collide. My name is Mitch. And I'm Justin. And today we are talking about Norman Osborn, Green Goblin. Yes. He's a personal favorite of yours, I believe. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, Spider-Man is my personal favorite hero, and Norman Osborn is probably his greatest villain. Yeah, it's I would say. debatable between him and Dr. Octopus. I would put Norman Osborn as a... They're really 50-50, really. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good villains, both. Like, either way that you look at it. I would say Norman just... Uh, just he has a wider, more colorful history. Yes. Um, in terms of... He branches away from Spider-Man. He's not just a Spider-Man villain in the sense that Doc Ock, you always think Spider-Man. Yes. Norman Osborn, he's led some teams. Yes. But he was originally just a Spider-Man villain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, yeah, he was replaced, and then he made his return, and mm-hmm. he's had a good line. Mm-hmm. So where did we first meet the Green Goblin? So here, so Green Goblin is interesting as a villain, and you, it's something that I don't think you get to see very often in storytelling and uh, and whatnot. It was done very well. So uh, Norman, o- well, not Norman Osborn, Green Goblin's first appearance was Amazing Spider-Man issue number 14, 1964. Okay. So keep this in mind. Spider-Man's first appearance was uh, Amazing Fantasies number 15 in 1962. Uh, Spider-Man's first issue, solo series, was Amazing Spider-Man issue number one in 1963. Green Goblin, his greatest nemesis, uh, didn't get his introduction until Amazing Spider-Man 14 in 1964, a full year after he's had his debut. Or two years since he's had his first appearance, really. That was his first main villain? No. That's, he, Green Goblin becomes his greatest villain, but he wasn't introduced until like a year or two after his introduction. Yeah. Usually somebody's arch nemesis is like right from the get go, but Green Goblin right. not until much later. Yeah, well I find well not much, much later, but you know, two years after his introduction. Yeah, I find with a lot of characters they've developed the release of the character already with a set, you know, arch nemesis in mind. Yes. Um some it's rare that we get the character with like the the flub villains. Yes. Right? Where it's just a bunch of uh, a bank robber, uh, a mischievous you know, civilian or yeah. something, and then oh wow, they get a big major villain. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what happened here. Just, he got introduced a whole bunch of different other guys before this one. Yeah, Vulture was his first. Uh, technically, the Chameleon. Technically, Te- technically the Chameleon's Spider-Man's first villain. Yeah. yeah, technically. Why technically? Because in Amazing Fantasy number fifteen, uh, the Chameleon was pretending to be a villain, and Spider-Man was like. Wait, 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 he was chasing the chameleon in Amazing Fantasy number fifteen. Yeah, and chameleon ended up getting the, getting away, but chameleon was technically his first villain. But his first super here super villain fight was with the vulture. Ah, okay, okay. So that separates <laughs> us two a little bit. <laughs> now, Green Goblin is the first villain to ever learn Spider Man's identity. Is he not? I want to say yes. I believe so. I believe he uh, used some kind of gas to cancel out yeah. Spider-Man's hey, Peter Tingle. Yes. And <laughs> um, basically sneak up on him and catch him as he's changing back into a civilian attire. That's right. And as soon as he saw, oh, I get Peter Parker. Yeah. Um, captured him. Hit, yes. him. hit him with some gas, uh, you know, tied him up with some cord, took him back to his lair and started... Rattling on about his master plan on how this is his demise and he'd never see the light of day again. And so now he'll show him his face and he'll tell him all he needs to know because don't worry, you're going to die. Yeah. Well, it, 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 we're skipping something uh, that I found really interesting about Green Goblin uh, t- leading up to this story. Okay, why did we skip it? Uh, is the fact that, um, and this is the part that I found the most interesting about Green Goblin, is that when he was first introduced, you don't know. The reader, oh yeah, the reader ourselves, did not know who the Green Goblin was. Yeah. They did not reveal who the Green Goblin was. Green Goblin's identity was rem- was kept a secret until issue thirty seven. Thirty seven. He captures him, and then thirty nine. Well, he gets the reveal. I think Norman Osborn, the name, the character, was revealed in issue number thirty seven, and we get to see the face in thirty nine. Uh, yes. So I think the capture, the the kidnapping of Spider Man, uh, where like Norman Osborn finds out who Spider Man is, was issue thirty eight. 
Uh, and in 39 is when he reveals who he is. That would make a lot of sense. Yeah. And issue 38 was the last issue drawn by uh, uh, by Steve Ditko. Now, in that final issue is where I believe Sam Raimi got the idea for his um, first film with Tobey Maguire uh, and the death of Green Goblin because after he breaks out, a fight ensues and the glider he positioned, I believe, to yes. uh, sneak up on him, but he dodges last second. And I think that's the comic that we got the first uh, film from. Yeah, all of that is from uh, the night the. The, com- the comic series that Night Deck when Stacy died. We'll get to that in a second. Ah, yes. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, so yeah, so um, uh, so the, the sequence of events that leads to that story was this happened. Norman Osborn uh, this, this, uh, shows who he is. Sp- uh, Norman and Spider Man fight. Um, Norman gets hit into some like electrical wires that put him in a co- in a coma and makes him uh, become amnesiac. He forgets that he he was ever to Green Goblin. He forgets that Peter Parker was uh, uh, that forgets that Peter Parker was Spider Man, and to save Peter's face, uh, to save Harry's face, because Harry is Peter Parker's best friend. Harry Osborn being Norman Osborn's son, um, to save his best friend's face, he burnt the Green Goblin costume and gear so that the police didn't know that. Norman Osborn was the Green Goblin and said yeah. that the Green Goblin caused this coma. Yeah, because basically he had Peter bound. Yeah. Um, and he was rattling on and on and on. And Peter's letting him do it to yeah. buy time to get get his restraints off. And yeah. once he got the restraints off, during the fight was, yeah, there's an explosion too, yeah. I think. So in the explosion, he like took the mask off and like saved him and took him to safety. And that's kind of where it was like, um, I found his identity, and it never happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Typical comic scheme, right? Because yeah. then they were able to carry on. Yeah. And the next thing we see is, I think, Harry in his, like, uh, hospital bed consoling his father, and his father's like, these last few years have been a blur. Like, I don't know. I've kind of lost all memory of it. But don't worry. I know, like, we have a strong future going forward. Because apparently he was just a prick to Harry ever since... Um, Ever ever since he got the goblin serum, and he just turned into an asshole. New roommate. Mm-hmm. Ah. <laughs> Mitch was confused who he heard walking upstairs. <laughs> the goblin came to visit. <laughs> uh, but yeah. So that was issue. What you said four, fourteen. Well, what issue we, fourteen was his first appearance. So it took us from fourteen to thirty-seven. Yeah. To finally figure out um, who Spider-Man was, and then two issues later, who, who the Goblin was. So yeah. that, that's and a then, long stint. Yeah, and then one issue later for him, to, for all of that to get forgotten. Right. So it takes 25 issues to lead up to the reveal, and, you know, then one issue to wipe it all away. That's right. That's right. So then after that, there was a few more stories that uh, uh, between here and the night that Gwen Stacy died. Uh, because the night that Quinn Stacy died, that hap- doesn't happen until Amazing Spider-Man number 121 in 1973. Yes. Now, um, at what point did we learn of his origin? Because all, all this time, I don't think we've ever been told Green Goblin's origin. No. So, I don't remember exactly where. Like, So, I did write down his origin, and there's quite a bit for me to talk about, actually. There's quite a bit to his origin, but uh, I don't know when all of this was revealed. I don't know if it was this was later. revealed. It was a lot later. It must have been the the way this plays out. It se- it seems like it's something that would have um, happened much later. Like mm-hmm. they would have been told much later. So pretty much tells about his dad. Uh, so Norman Osborn's dad was born in New Haven, Connecticut. Um, uh, he was a wealthy industrialist named Amberson Osborn. <laughs> okay. Um, Amberson was a brilliant sci- a student to the uh, fields of science, and uh, but when one of his uh, when he lost control of a manufacturing company and lost his fortunes, he became an alcoholic and became abusive towards his family, uh-huh. towards Norman Osborn and Norman's uh, mom. Norman despised his father, vowed to be uh, to be a better breadwinner, and develop and uh, develop. Uh, so. 
um, uh, Norm, uh, Norman started to resent his dad, hate his dad, uh, and vow that he'll be a better father than his dad ever was. He'll be able to provide more. And... That's right. Yeah. Uh, but also, he started to develop somewhat of uh, early signs of homicidal tendencies to uh, uh, to as an outlet to the abuse that he was taking from his father. Oh. Yeah, so he was already kind of psychotic when he was young. What kind of tendencies was he just displaying? I'm sure he, like, killed dogs and animals and stuff like that. Yeah. Typical. Yeah. Typical. Or maybe he became a bully. I'm not too sure. He wasn't very clear on that. Okay, now, because he goes on to later uh, run Oz Corp yeah. with a partner. Um, like, like, you know, his name was Mendel Strom. So, Strom. Uh, he went, well, first he went to college for chemistry, business administration, and electrical engineering, which is scary and funny because... I went to college for my first time going to college was for business administration. Yeah. Second time going to college was for social work. And uh, my third time going to college was for electrical engineering. So two of the three I had the same education as Norman Osborne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only the only thing I don't have is the chemistry. <laughs> right. Now he's supposed to be a high level uh genius. Yes. Very high level genius. Yes. Expertise in multiple fields, like you just said. Yes. Um and with that, he put it all towards, is it military research? Military, military research chemical tech? You were just chemicals in general. Yeah, like pharmaceutical yeah. And chemicals and whatnot. But yeah, he, uh, uh, Mendel Strom was one of his professors at college. I taught him. Ah, so he obviously was like, okay, well, you're brilliant. And yeah. they started working on some lab experiments. Yeah. But Mendel was the one who had a lot of the notes, I believe. Yes. Mendel was the smarter one. He was the professor. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so Norman, his greed started taking over and decided he wanted to frame Mendel for embezzlement. I don't even know if he framed him. I think he was actually moving money around between companies um, with all intent to reimburse and pay it back. Yeah. But knowing this, Norman said, oh, this is my opportunity. I can get you on fraud or some kind of charges legally and get you out of the company that way. Yeah. That happened to kill you. Yeah, so he ended up getting all of Mendel's uh, shares, becoming a sole proprietor. Uh, propri- proprietor? Pro- yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of Oscorp, yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. And then, obviously, he gets access, access to all his notes, all his research, all his formulas. Yes. And he starts monkeying around, mixing chemicals, mixing these formulas until... Uh, I believe one day he's interrupted by Harry and gives him the, the old fuck off shoes. Quit bothering me. Yeah. You're just a meddlesome. You know, you're an idiot. Yeah. Get out of here. Because his son wasn't a genius. Well, it, it, there's more to it than that, though. Uh, so what happened was um, Harry's mom, uh, Norman's wife, died when Harry was not even a year old. So he blamed Harry. Well, it's not that he in, blamed in Harry. Ways. It's just that he... Um, he became more focused about his work. He became a workaholic and started to emotionally distance himself from Harry. He detached from the family and used his work to fill the void. That's right. And and to not face the trauma of losing his wife. Yeah. It's not, she's not gone if I don't have time to see her or think about it or yeah. it is, dwell on it. Yeah. This wasn't part of the plan. She was supposed to be here to help with Harry. With Harry. Of course. And so, obviously, Harry kind of grew up a lot like his father. Yes. In the sense of, you know, ne- rather than abuse, it was neglect. Yes. yes. He replaced one vice for another. Yes. Still ended up, you know, with, with the shitty family dynamic. Yeah. Um, but like I said, one day he's sitting there mixing formulas, you know, uh, and Harry comes to bother him and he tells him to piss off. And just after that, he's distracted, I believe, and one of the chemicals turns green. Yeah. And that's when he... Uh, became the Green Goblin, getting yes. the Goblin Serum. Yes. So the serum worked because the formula was uh, developed by Mendel Strom and the serum was supposed to enhance uh, uh, strength, speed, healing, and intelligence. And intelligence. Uh, so it, it worked, but one side effect, severe insanity. Yeah, and, and <laughs> during the explosion, I believe his face was badly damaged of sorts, and so Harry took him to the hospital and um, they did all kinds of surgeries to try and fix the damage deep within his brain, they said. Yeah. Um, uh, said, saying that they couldn't repair it, they couldn't fix it, but hey, at least they had saved his life. Yeah. And after they do, you know, the old typical villain speech bubble where it's like their little thoughts. Ha, idiots. 
And like they thought this was a, an illness or, or some kind of damage. They aren't able to see that it's making me smarter. It's the serum. Yeah. So that's what they, they thought damage to the brain was. He's now thinking more, using more of his brain than he ever, ever has. Yeah. He's of greater intelligence now than he ever thought possible. Yeah. So he's just kind of sitting there laughing and be like, yep, take me home, Harry. <laughs> take me home. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Then, and then where did that lead us? Right. That's basically his origin. Yes. So, um, the way listening uses guys to know the price Oh, yeah. Okay, so, yeah, that just pretty much read up to. So, okay, so, uh, yeah, Norman Osborne, after that, after the serum, Norman Osborne uses, uh, he creates the Green Goblin uh, persona so that he can become uh, the, uh, uh, the new crime lord of New York. Yes. And how to do that is that he initially he wanted to defeat Spider Man as a means to give him credibility. Right, because look, I took out this this hero. Yeah. Now I'm the baddest. Yeah. And so he recruits three henchmen, I believe. Who are the three henchmen? Uh, I don't know. In in his first uh, showdown with Spider Man, I believe he has three henchmen that he hires, and he uses them to try and team up to. You know, get the upper hand on him. The Spider Man, obviously being Spider Man, just kind of beat the hell out of them all. Yeah. And ended up chasing off Goblin. Yeah. And then Goblin returns, you know, back to his his lair slash whatever mansion house, and that's when we see him with the safe open, yeah. blocking who who it is, and you see a man in a brown suit being like, "Oh, the Green Goblin will strike again another day," kind of thing. And it's just like that was his first interaction. With Spider-Man, though, he had hired three other goons who he was like, well, shit, this didn't go to plan. My plan was to beat him up and then use these as my lieutenants to then, you know, take over the city. And he's like, shit. Yeah. So that was the, the comic version of, I believe, his first interaction with Spider-Man. Yeah. Also, it's worth to note that in his first appearance, he his backlighter. Yep. Oh, was a broom? Yeah, what's a broom? <laughs> yeah, literally like a badass witch's Harry Potter broom. Yeah, well, because he was completely themed around Halloween. I mean, like yeah. he throws jack-o'-lantern, explosive jack-o'-lanterns. He rides around on a broom. He's got like a witch's hat on. Yeah, well, his his origin was supposed to be different altogether. Yeah. He was supposed to be a creature, a demon, a demon freed from a, an Egyptian yeah. sarcophagus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, that yeah, happened. No, Stan Lee's original idea for the new Goblin is that he was supposed to be an actual demon. And Steve Ditko decided to make him, now I'm going to make him human. <laughs> would it have better been better if he was an actual Goblin? I think it would have given him a lot less to do with the character. Yeah, no, no. It, it, doing him human was the correct way to go, which is why I am not a fan of how they did Green Goblin in the Ultimate Universe. How did they do him in the Ultimate Universe? Same... Origin somewhat, except the green, uh, the goblin serum turned him into an actual goblin. Like, you know how you saw green goblin in. Um, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Making sure that the Katie was up. Yeah. Um. Ultimate. Ultimate goblin. Spider-Man. Yes. Um. You were. Have you watched? So you have seen uh, Into the Spider Verse, right? Yeah. How Norman Osborn looked like in that movie? He looked kind of nutty. Yeah, well, with the, the horns and the, the he was much larger and he had the claws and uh, uh, he uh, he could breathe fire and oh, he was like a dragon. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the ultimate version of uh, Green Goblin. Lame. Yeah, no, super lame. Yeah. It's like why did you make a dragon? Yeah. Although to be fair. This Green Goblin, this version of Norman Osborn, is the version of Norman Osborn that managed to kill his version of Spider Man. Well, he's a dragon. (laughs) (laughs) He said he breathes fire, he's much bigger and and badder, and. He flies on his own, doesn't need a backlighter. But that's the reason why I don't like the ultimate version of uh, Green Goblin, because he doesn't use gadgets. He's, uh, like, he's all about his fireballs that he breathes or shoots through his You made claws. him into a Hulk dragon rather than an intelligent gadget That's right. user. That's right. That's right. That's why I'm not a fan of the ultimate version. Well, we haven't gone really over his powerless. Should, no. Should we cover his abilities and powers? Or... Yeah, before we start talking about more, because I got 
a lot want to talk about. <laughs> oh, we're just on Norman. We haven't even gotten to Harry. Oh, I'm not, I, we're not doing Harry today. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. We're not doing Harry. We're not doing uh, Ben Ben Ulrich. Uh, we're not doing... We're not doing um, Hobgoblins. We're not doing Ben Kingsley. or. There's a lot of goblins out there, guys. So, <laughs> this is Green Goblin number one. Yeah, this is... The original, is... the best, Norman yes. Osborn. There are others, and we'll mention them now. Just so you know that there'll be later episodes to come. Yes, yes, yes. But, like, Norman Osborn, there's way too much for, for me to unpack to do him justice if I wanted to talk about the other ones. So. We'll do a quick timeline just so you understand who the goblins are yeah. and when they show up. So before we go into Norman's powers, and before we do that, it's, I know a good segue to do this. So as we were talking about earlier, um, take, so... Take that, will you? Uh, <laughs> My dog's chewing a bone here. He doesn't want to give it up. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it on. Put, put, it, put it on a site. Give it to me. <laughs> Just take him out of sight. If he doesn't see it, he won't. Bowser, come. Now. See? Done. Yeah. Out of sight, out of mind. Especially with the dog. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, bud. You can have this. So... Let's get back to the story we were talking about yeah. with the death of Gwen Stacy. Okay. That's right. probably a good way to segue into everything else. Yes. So we go back to the story where um, uh, Norman Osborn. So Norman Osborn lost his uh, memory uh, when he was fighting Spider Man. And then flash forward to 1973, and uh, uh, something happened when Harry Osborn ended up becoming a uh, druggie. And it gets an overdose on drugs, and uh, Norman Osborn finds his son like uh, in a hospital. He just overdosed from drugs, and the, the stress of dealing with his son, dealing with uh, with an addi- with addiction to drugs and and whatnot, um, is what put Norman Osborn over the edge and made him start to remember who he was. He started to remember about his Green Goblin persona and that Peter Parker was Spider-Man and all that started to come back to him. That's funny because some research I had done had shown he was actually in a board meeting with Jonah Jameson and I think Peter and some other people. Yeah. And they were showing footage of the Green Goblin playing Spider-Man on this projector. And when... uh, Norman saw this footage, it jogged his memory. Yeah. And he started remembering all the times he was being goblin. And then over the next few weeks, he kept having these flashbacks of memory floods and random intervals of him being the goblin until one night he wakes up in the middle of bed and says, I'm the goblin. <laughs> That's what I saw from the comic panels in one of my researches there. And that could be. So Norman Osborn regained his memory Multiple times. twice before this final yeah. time. Uh, and so, for all I know, that could have been one of those times. I think that was the first one, based on the comic panels looking really old. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, they look really old. So yeah, so <laughs> I wasn't gonna mention that because really, like, lost his, he gained his memory, lost it again. Gained his memory, lost it again. Nah, nah, fucking dumb. Let's just get back to it's a reoccurring thing. Yeah, yeah, let's get back to when he regains his memory permanently, but with the, no more with the amnesia, the stupid plot. It device. was there to stay. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a plot device. But anyways, uh, so he gets his memory back, and this is when he decides to go and capture uh, Gwen Stacy. I think he went after Aunt May before this, but let's skip ahead to where he captures Gwen Stacy. Okay. And, Sp- and Spider-Man goes and try and save Gwen Stacy, and it's exactly like they've shown in the first Ma- Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi movie, where he has the school, uh, the, the children on one end, and... Mary Jane on the other. He didn't have the children and, and Gwen. He just had Gwen. But while Spider-Man and Green Goblin... Uh, Green Goblin just drops Gwen from the bridge. And Spider-Man tries to save her with his webbing. Like they showed in Amazing Spider-Man number 2. Where he where she falls in the bell tower. This time it's in the bridge. He webs, grabs her by the ankle. And the whiplash of the sudden stop snaps her neck, killing her. Yeah, in the comic you see the web... And- Snap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, it was later revealed in some other comic 
that she was already dead. She was already dead. You can't fall from that height, and you're dead before you hit the floor. No, no, that's bullshit. That's bullshit uh, for two reasons. One, um, I think MythBusters or somebody talked about that. And that's complete bullshit. They disproved it. Yeah, yeah that's that's the whole bullshit. the whole heart attack thing before you hit the yeah, floor. Yeah, it's common belief that people that people die before you land. It's the fall that actually kills you. No, no, it's the fall. <laughs> Unless you're falling from such a height that you lost oxygen and you passed out while you were falling. But you'd have to be falling from way higher than the top of that bridge. Probably didn't start with oxygen. (laughs) Exactly. The height at which you'd need to do. Exactly. The velocity at which you'd fall. You'd probably, yeah, like even if you're in the atmosphere. Exactly. But I did read a comic where they did retcon it and say that Norman Osborne, that she was already, that Norman had already killed her before he tossed her off the bridge. And had it already impregnated her. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So let's go. Let's get back to that afterwards, because that's going to be in his. Uh, I'm going to be Most talking about moments. Yeah, I've got some of his uh, his uh, greatest hits. Greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I've got some. I've got quite a bit. Right. So notice, I didn't bring any comments with me. It's because I actually do. I have read a lot of comics yep. with Norman Osborn. I just. Through the years of moving from London to Timmins, back from Timmins to Toronto, to Toronto back to London. Yeah, there's a lot of nomadic movements there. <laughs> yeah, I, I lost a lot of these comics. Yeah, yeah. But I have read many stories with Norman Osborne, so I've got a lot of good stories to talk about. All right, good. Um, but yeah, so um, after that, after Gwen Stacy dies, they fight, and just like how they showed in the Sam Raimi movie, the backlighter uh, was going to stake Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Sense. They warned him ahead of time. He dodged out of the way. The backlighter impaled Norman Osborn. Yeah, and this was after, right after, this was after obviously, Spider-Man just realized, you just killed the love of my life kind of thing. One, yeah. one of them, and he loses it at this point. He yeah. is not holding back. He is clobbering the shit out of Green Goblin in yeah. an alley, just beating his brains in yeah. until the point where he's like, what am I doing? I'm about to become the murderer you are. Yeah. I keep doing this. And in that moment of him pausing, realizing, and giving mercy was when Green Goblin tried to bring in the glider to finish Spider-Man as Spider-Man spider Peter Tingle. Yeah. Let him <laughs> dodge it, just like we saw in the movie. So That's yeah, right. that was when, you know, in the movie, he brings back the body. Mm-hmm. And Harry sees Spider-Man and thinks Spider-Man killed his father. Yes. Now, in the comic, I don't know if that happened as well. Not exactly, but um, Norman Harry. It, it does become common knowledge that Spider that Norman that Green Goblin's death. Spider Man's responsible. Yes, in some way, shape, or form. Yes. he was there. He was present. He was responsible. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, so since Norman Osborn's death, yes, there's been many goblins. There's been Ben Kingsley, who at the time was another villain named the Jack O' Lantern. When the Jack O' Lantern, Ben Kingsley, finds these. Uh, finds this uh, uh, secret layer of the Green Goblin. He uses that technology to uh, create his new, his own weaponry, his own persona, and created the Hobgoblin. And since then, there was many Hobgoblins too. Uh, J- uh, the one that I grew up uh, to is Jason Mackendale. Um, and Jason Mackendale uh, was only like the second, and it has been like three other Hobgoblins oh, after that. Yeah. So and, that's an episode on its own. We'll yeah. cover Hobgoblins later. Yeah. Uh, Harry Osborn becomes the Hobgoblin, and then uh, Ben o- U- U- Ulrich, Ulrich, or, um, Ben Ulrich, Ulrich, yes, Yurik, uh, Yurik, yes, Ben Yurik, yes, the son of Phil, uh, no, Phil Yurik, uh, which one? He's the reporter on Daredevil. Remember? Yeah, Phil is. Yeah, uh, Ben. Ben is. Ben. Ben. Phil is the nephew, and Phil is the one who becomes the Green Goblin. Phil becomes the Green Goblin. Yeah. yeah. Phil. Phil. Or... Yeah. Yeah. I always get the two names mixed up because you had the you have the the reporter Eelric, uh, which was uh, best friends with Peter Parker, but also friends with uh, Matt Murdock as well. He I was just, gonna say he crosses through so many. It's like, okay, yeah. is that the same guy who's in this one, this one, this one? Yes. Okay, so there it is. Yeah. 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 And Phil, uh, who is Ben's. Nephew, he ends up uncovering one of Norman's secret hideouts and becomes a goblin as well. Yeah, because this is all New York. Yes. Right? So, what heroes reside in New York? We got Spider-Man. Everybody. Like, pretty much everyone. Well, everybody created by Stan Lee, because Stan Lee lived in New York, so he created everybody in New York. 
So Captain America, Iron Man, uh, Spider Man, the Fantastic Four, uh, Luke Cage. I mean, like, so Thing, uh, his home turf is Yancey Street, which is in New York. Right. Uh, Daredevil is in Hell's Kitchen. Spider Man yeah. is from Queens. Which is, is, yeah, even uh, Iron Fist, like they're all New York. Huh? Yeah, yeah, they're all New York. Jessica Jones. Yeah, they're all New York. Okay. But uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so when I got into comics, Harry Osborn was a Green Goblin. Yeah. And uh, now, now Harry's been Hobgoblin and he's been Green Goblin. He's never been Hobgoblin. Oh, okay. I thought you said at one point there Harry had been Hobgoblin. No, just Green Goblin. Okay. Yeah. So when I so when I started reading, Harry was a Green Goblin. Okay. And that was after he again kind of like Ben Kingsley found one of his dad's lairs, or how did Harry? Become goblin. We're not going to go into too, too much detail. We're not going to go into too much detail on that. I didn't do a lot of research on that, um, and because when I started reading, uh, it wasn't too long into when I started reading that Harry Osborn dies. Right. So and he dies because of the serum. Yeah, because I was basically trying to get at is the movie accurate? Oh, um, how? Probably. Well, I'll do some research on Harry. We'll do an episode on Harry, and then we could really know if the movie right. was accurate as far as how it becomes. Questions. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how accurate that is. We'll we'll find out when we do the episode on Harry. Okay. Uh, but the uh, almost everything he did with Norman was pretty accurate. Because basically everything that we've talked about so far brought us um, to Gwen Stacy's mm-hmm. death, mm-hmm. Norman Osborn's death. Mm-hmm. He's been through his amnesiac time. We've done his origin. Mm-hmm. Have we done his powers? We haven't done his powers yet. No. So I wanted to talk about how he died and the subsequent versions of goblins before we got into his powers. Perfect. So his powers are super strength, strong in his Spider-Man super strength, uh, super speed and reflexes. Uh, not as fast as Spider-Man, uh, but enough to build to go toe-to-toe with Spider-Man. The same with his reflexes as well. He's fast enough and has good enough reflexes to keep up with Spider-Man. Okay. Uh, he has a Batman level amount of technology on him. <laughs> Pretty much at any given time, like he yeah. has like an electro gauntlet. I yeah. think. Yeah. That he can. Like, he could shot shoot you. lasers through his fingers. He could. He has um, uh, batarangs. Uh, well, like bat-shaped ninja stars. Yeah, they're like super high-tech razor blades. Yes. Um, his pumpkin bombs. Yeah, he's classic. got his uh, his classic pu- pumpkin bombs. His jack his explosive jack o' lanterns. Doesn't he's... he use um the sound like piercing? No, that's Ben. It? Ah, that's Ben. Or right. Phil. Phil. Okay. Yeah. Um, gases. He uses a series he, of different. He is gases. very notorious for using gases. So his ma- his mask uh, comes equipped with a uh, air filterizer, mm-hmm. uh, so that whatever ma- gases he uses, he d- doesn't affect himself. <laughs> That'd be pretty shitty. But more often than not, when he gets the upper hand of Spider-Man, it's because of his his knowledge in chemical warfare. To be able to negate his spider sense, for example. Yeah, exactly. Uh, among other things, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was a trait that Harry took, uh, took on from his dad. Uh, uh, because one of the stories that I... In the death of Harry Osborn, he ended up using poison against Spider-Man. Uh. Yeah. I would imagine there'd be gases to melt his webs and stuff like that. Stuff like that, yeah. yeah. Um, and of uh, course, his glider. Yeah, and his back glider as well. That gives him great mobility, speed, flight. I don't know what the upper limits of the speed of the back glider, but it's fast. It's fast. Well, it flies, and it's fast. Yeah. And it can carry all kinds of bombs and gadgets and weaponry and explosives on it as well. Yeah. Hi, right, Mom. And then another thing is um, his regeneration. Yes, and regeneration. So let's get back to his death, and let's talk about that. So uh, at the end of the dreaded Clone Wars, <laughs> it was revealed. So at the end of the Clone Wars, um, the writer decided to make um, the clone Ben Riley as... Uh, uh, the real Spider-Man and Peter Parker was actually the clone so that they could freshen it up they could retire Peter Parker and Ben Riley is now Spider-Man kind of thing but the readers didn't like it uh, they, uh, uh, so the writers ended up having to reverse their decision on that they brought Peter back in and in Sue brought Norman back from the dead 
So Norman is now back from the dead. And in the final stories of the Clone Saga, um, uh, Norman Osborn beat the shit out of Ben Riley, and then when Sp- when he was uh, when Sp- when Peter Parker was distracted, Norman was going to do the same trick again. Uh, use his backlighter to uh, take up the spikes to go and impale Spider Man. Oh, apparently you could barely hear us. Good to know. Is that better? Is your volume low? <laughs> <laughs> is it us or is it you? Yeah. <laughs> it could be us. Could be us. Okay, good. Um, so at the end of the Clone Wars, uh, so no, Harry Osborne has been rightly defeated right. and he gets his glider to trying to impale Peter Parker again, but this time Ben Riley gets in the way of the uh, glider killing Ben Riley. <laughs> and to prove that Peter Parker is the real and Ben Riley was a clone, just like all the other clones that were created by the Jackal, he's just disintegrated after he died. Oh. Revealing that Peter Parker was indeed the original all the, uh, all along. But he had him convinced that he was the clone at one point. That was another yes. one of his uh, his big schemes that he had pulled on Spider-Man. Many, many. So let's talk about his big hits now. Yeah. Because there's much more to talk about uh, afterwards, but I want to talk about some of his big hits. That's pretty bad, though, like, to be able to convince someone, you're just a clone. Uh, it's, you're not even the real one. That's just the tip of the iceberg, my friend. That's just the tip of the iceberg of what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> So, All right, I, lay it on me. Okay, so when I first started reading Spider Man in the early 90s, uh, 1994 ish, 90, between 92 and 94 is when I would have started reading Spider Man. Okay. Um, and in this time, Peter Parker's parents are alive and well. It was revealed that Peter Parker's parents uh, didn't die when he was a child. So, when, so, Peter Parker's origin was that. His parents died. That's why Aunt May and Uncle Ben took him in because his parents died in a plane accident. Right. What really happened was they were actual double agents. They were secret agents for the United States, but pretending to be agents for the Red Skull. And when the Red Skull find out who they were, he ended up exploding the plane that they were in, killing them. That makes a lot of sense. I had no idea about any of that from Peter's parents. Yeah. So. Uh, but when I started reading comics, Peter Parker's parents are alive and well. So it was revealed that they never died in that plane accident. They actually survived. Oh. Yeah. So, um, and Peter didn't trust them at first because he's got a lot of villains that could have accidentally found out about his secret identity and planted these people to pretend to be his parents to get to the people that he loved. So he was hesitant to believe in them at first. Aunt May didn't believe these people uh, either because, like, uh, uh, Peter's dad is Ben's brother. So, and May, she knew them both very, very well. And she knew to the bottom of her heart that they're dead. But here they are, alive and well. So she had a hard time believing them and trusting them as well. This isn't right. Yeah. So, um, after a couple of years of Peter Parker's parents being alive, uh, uh, Peter started to trust in them. Like, they were there for Peter Parker. They were there during the Maximum Carnage story. So, if you re- go back and read the Maximum Carnage story, you'll notice Peter Parker's parents are alive. You're right, going to ask yourself, what the fuck? Right? So, this is what's going on. And then, eventually... Eventually, uh, Aunt May started to trust and believe that these that these were actually Peter's parents. And then after the Maximum Carnage series and everything, Peter decided that it's about time that I trust these people and I'm going to reveal who I really am. I'm going to reveal that I'm Spider-Man to my parents. And when he does, it triggers a programming in them. Turns out that this entire time, after the, so many years of... Like comic book reading years, like it, like it's not just like a couple of sp- a span of a couple of issues. I'm talking like a span of like from ninety two to ninety four, ninety four to ninety six. This is a long thing coming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It reveals that the, their parents 
weren't actually human. They were androids. They're LMDs, life model decoys. Yeah, yeah, they were. Well, not exactly, but they were androids. They were androids that were created by the community. Sort of. This is the part where it gets confusing. So the chameleon hires the vulture to be the liaison to these androids. So the chameleon is the one who uh, set all this up. Um, and so these androids ended up, uh, and the programming was these androids was, go was going to stay with Peter Parker until Peter Parker reveals to them who is Spider-Man. So when Peter Parker reveals that he is Spider-Man, these androids were supposed to go back to the Vulture to reveal what they find out so that the Vulture can tell the Chameleon this information. Oh. <coughs> after this battle ensues, so after uh, Peter finds out about this and chases down his uh, android parents, finds out that the uh, Vulture was involved in this, um, a fight ensues. And um, at this time, the Vulture had these gauntlets that could absorb youth. So Vulture was really, really old at the, uh, when he was originally drawn and everything. He was always old. And all, like, looks like Mr. Burns, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got these gauntlets that could absorb youth. And he got a hold of Spider-Man and, spy and started absorbing his youth, oh, making man. him go all young and started getting... You, you'll see pictures of, of, of the Vulture with, like, long, luscious red hair and everything that's from these gauntlets giving him uh. youth. And so as he was absorbing Peter Parker's life, the android parents saved Peter's life by sacrificing themselves. And and uh, then Vulture's gloves ends up killing, destroying the android parents. Right. And Peter ends up defeating uh, Vulture, right? So Peter lost his parents when he was a child and then got injected with these android versions of his parents made them made him care for these parents and then he had to witness these parents turn into uh androids that was going to betray them and then witnesses their death after he gave an attention and started believing that they were his parents so effectively he got to witness his that's parents death twice that's a roller coaster yeah. And the so then the it's second was, time was them sacrificing themselves to save them. Exactly. Too, exactly. Because they became attached to them. Exactly. <laughs> like, what the fuck? So the reason why I'm bringing all this up is because Spider Man ends up going to, because this put Spider Man over the edge. Like this is when the Spider Man started started to not refer to himself as Spider Man anymore. He was just the spider. There was no uh, more man. He's just the spider. <laughs> and uh, he went after the vulture. And he was completely ready to kill the vulture and the vulture was hiding inside one of craven's old um uh layers and so vulture had a bunch of different traps that were actually craven traps and craven traps are actually really deadly because of craven. <laughs> so uh but anyways spider-man walked through everything i mean there's a, like a, a cell of tigers and spider and spider-man just fucking just wrecks all the tigers <laughs> and, uh, yeah it's just like just walk through all the different traps Gets up to the chameleon. Chameleon tries to smack Spider-Man over the head with like a, a log or something, and he didn't even try to dodge it. This log just snaps right across his neck and didn't even move, didn't even feel it or anything. <laughs> it's just like I'm too mad. Yeah, well, exactly. And he was ready to kill the chameleon. Anyways, he doesn't end up killing the chameleon, but at the end, a video plays, and it was Harry. It was Harry Osborn revealed. To be the one who actually orchestrated, orchestrated everything. This. He's the one who created the androids. He was the one who told the chameleon to uh, model the, the androids. Well, model the androids to Peter Parker's parents, yeah. and to send these androids to Peter Parker's family. Because why Peter Parker? Right? Harry Osborn knows, but nobody else does. Right. And then uh, it was revealed later on that. He, Harry's dad, Norman, was the actual mastermind behind it. Without even Harry knowing, Norman had placed different seeds to make all of this happen. So Norman was actually responsible for all this shit afterwards. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, so, so there's that. <laughs> uh, there is, you mentioned it earlier. So there was one time where Gwen and Peter split 
and or not split, but Gwen went to Europe for a trip, a, fu- a field trip. And while she was in Europe, she uh, ends up meeting up with Norman Osborne, and Norman, an older man, he's very charismatic. And one night of drunken whateverness, she ends up having a one night stand with her uh, her boyfriend's best friend's dad, and that ended up getting her pregnant, and she gave birth to twins. Yes. So that actually gave Norman Osborn the motivation to have Gwen Stacy killed, because she, with Gwen Stacy dead, it can never be revealed to Peter about these children that Norman Osborn is going to raise to hate Peter Parker. And these children, these twins who were infused with the goblin serum because they were the spawns of Norman Osborn, and because of having Norman Osborn's blood, having the goblin serum in them, they had a natural increased metabolism, an increased aging process. Mm-hmm. So even though they should be like four, five, six years old, they are actually full-grown adults when you find out about all this. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Trying to think of some other. I had I should have wrote down these these. I think Aunt May got. Um, the chameleon pretended to be Aunt May for a while, did he not? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, yeah. There's a lot of people who have used. Uh, well, once again, not At because Norman's. chameleon, not because chameleon knew who Spider Man was. But at Norman's telling, I think. Yeah, and also because Peter Parker took pictures of Spider Man, so yeah. that's a good way. So uh, everybody targeted Peter Parker to find out who Spider Man was because he always gets these pictures of Spider Man, so he must know who Spider Man is, yeah. right? Uh, they always try to backdoor in that way, not realizing this is the front door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what else was Norman uh, responsible? Oh, Norman was responsible for the Clone Wars. Norman was the one who was responsible for um, uh, putting Miles Warren on a path to create these clones of Spider-Man. Like he, Norman was very hands-off. He felt right. like he's the one who made the clones or anything like that. But he did implant the seeds for Miles Warren to go as deep as he did into creating these clones of Peter Parker. And uh, Norman Osborn was watching all this unfold, and turns out when Peter first met with Ben Riley years and years and years yeah. ago, um, the fight ended where Ben uh, Ben Riley, that the clone dies, or Peter thinks he dies, so he ends up dropping him in a smokestack, uh, so that nobody can find the body. Because if anybody uncovers the body and sees the body, it looks like exactly like Peter Parker. People are gonna start putting two to two together, right? right? So he dumped the body in a smokestack. So, but Norman Osborn was watching all this, and he ended up going into the smokestack and grabbing. No, uh, Miles Warren went into the smokestack to grab the body back to save the uh, the, uh, the clone. But Norman Osborn ended up putting a, um, a a double inside the smokestack, a skeleton with the Peter with the Spider Man suit in the smokestack. And then years later, he commissioned a commi- uh, construction crew to break down that smokestack so they could uncover that body. And that's what spawned the whole entire wondering who's the real Peter Parker because um, that was that because in Peter's perspective, that body that was in a smokestack was the clone that he fought. Right. So if uh, so, if that's the clone, oh, and, and clones disintegrate when they die. So, like, was the real Peter Parker killed and I'm the clone kind of thing? Oh, is what why didn't that one disintegrate? Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. So it, it, it should have, but he put a different body there. That's right. Because, so it was Ben Riley that was in the smokestack. Miles Warren saved him. And then Norman Osborn ended up putting the fake body in. Oh, the- so he did save him. He got him out of there. That's right. But then, but finding that body in there made Peter start questioning. Well, am I a clone? Exactly, because that there's a body there wearing a Spider-Man costume. It didn't disintegrate like a clone is supposed to. So that means that was Peter. Is the real I'm Peter the Parker dead? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm trying to think. So does that bring us into 
What, Civil War? Yeah, so we're running a little bit of time, and this is pretty much where I figured we would end up with Norman Osborn. Is that a standalone episode on its own? Well, Civil yeah, War? yeah, because from here on out, um, the character Norman Osborn takes a turn to where he was... Iron Patriot. That's right. So uh, here, a Civil War happens, and the Secret Invasion happens, mm-hmm. and Siege happens... Norman Osborn uh, takes a different turn where he, up until Civil War, he was strictly a Spider-Man villain. Yeah. And then after these events that's, that we're about to go over, he's no longer a Spider-Man solo villain. He, he is now a MCU threat. Uh, well, not an MCU threat, just a Marvel threat, a Marvel Universe threat. Uh, not a universal threat, but... but global. Yes, yeah, like he's um, he's a bigger threat than just being just one guy's villain. He's no longer just in New York. That's right. That's he's right. Now he's got his eyes on the bigger picture. Yeah, he's he graduated from being just a Spider-Man villain to being a Lex Luthor. Yeah, I'm gonna take the world. Yeah, yeah. So I guess we could talk about that a little bit. Um, what else could we talk about? Oh, a couple of other things we could talk about. Actually, we don't have to get into all that, but there's still a lot more to talk about. So after um, he was revealed to be still alive, a few other, a few other events started happening. Uh, return. Uh, so after um, he returned and, they, and Ben Riley died, uh, it was revealed that Norman Osborn was actually in Europe, in France this entire time, in, like, in these years that he was supposedly dead. What? Yeah, and he ended up uh, mounting a network of spies and criminals and information and money. He ends up buying the Daily Bugle uh, and then um, plants evidence and forces uh, Ben Ulrich to uh, print a reprint uh, apologizing for the article that they printed showing that Norman Osborn was Green Goblin. Pretty much proving that Norman Osborn was not the Green Goblin. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. So uh, so now he's been cleared of the name of Green Goblin until Jessica Jones does the article on Norman Osborn re-revealing that he is the Green Goblin. Oh, she does an article. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about it briefly when we did the episode on Jessica Jones. She wrote an article revealing who uh, Norman Os- that Norman Osborn was the Green Goblin. How did she get her info? She just basically... She just took pretty good surprise. Watched him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it was after he killed somebody from uh, the Daily Bugle, a uh, uh, worker at the Daily Bugle. Just did she beat his ass? What's that? She go and beat his ass for a bit? Uh, I'm pretty sure he would kick her ass. You think so? I think so. Oh. She's strong and tough, but he's... He's got a lot in his arsenal. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that'd be a good one. Yeah. But um, when he got revealed to be uh, Green Goblin, this is when he finally got arrested. So this, so we're talking in the 2000s now. We're now in the early 2000s. So it's been 40 years of him, his publication, and he's finally got arrested once. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's the other thing that I found really fascinating. He never been to jail. He's never been caught until now. What? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's been killed. Who needs to be caught when you've been killed? Well, that's just it. I mean, I think back on it. Like, so he had a lot of fights with Spider-Man, and he always gets away. And then when a fight actually got finalized, he ended up getting, losing his memory. And then uh, when he got his memory back, he kills Gwen Stacy, and then he ends up dying. And then... His regeneration is what keeps him alive there, then? Yes. So that was when revealed that he has... The serum gave him a healing factor that allowed him to survive getting impaled in the heart. So, just think about that one for a second. <laughs> yeah, that's a rough one. Yeah. So, when he gets revived, he was hiding in Europe that whole time? Yes. Uh, yes. And, and it's not like he was just hiding in Europe and, dro- and, and taking... Sipping uh, martinis on the beach. No. Just said, no. No, he was... A, he, he, his obsession was still Spider-Man. And he was developing a network, and he still had the goals to be like a, a major player, crime lord kind of thing, right? Yeah. Uh, so he was amassing a network of information, a network of spies, a network of criminals. And like I said, he bought the Daily Bugle and cleared his name. Uh, let me go back to my notes here, one second. Wow, that's intense. That is dedication. That is a, 
amassing your entire life work just into taking down that one spider. Yeah, yeah. Never tr- called a, an exterminator. Yeah. Figured he'd do it himself. Uh, so when he got put in jail, I actually had this comic. I was actually looking for this comic to bring with me for Which tonight's one? episode. So uh, how he gets out of prison, I actually have this comic, this trade. He ends up from prison, hires Matt Gargan, the Scorpion, to go and kidnap Aunt May. Um, and um, so that and um, so Spider Man is knows that Matt Gargan has Aunt May, but Matt Gargan won't tell him where Aunt May is. Uh, the only way to, for him to ever see Aunt May again alive is if he goes and breaks out Norman Osborn from prison. So Spider-Man, and he ends up getting the help of Black Cat, ends up going into the prison to break out Norman Osborn. So they actually succeed. They free Norman Osborn. But by the time Norman Osborn got out of prison, turns out that he actually had arranged like 12 of Spider-Man's greatest villains all waiting for him outside of prison to kick his ass. And this was the issue where, Nor- where Matt Gargan ends up getting the Venom symbiote. Oh, fuck. Yeah, so now, so now, you see, he's fighting Norman Osborn, Matt Gargan, a scorpion, as Venom, plus ten more villains. I forgot what villains they were. There was, like, Stegron was there, I think. Um, no idea who that is. Either. You said, like, kind of, he, the lizard, but a, a stegosaurus instead of a, instead of a reptile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Stegron. Yeah. Um, I think he was one of the villains. I forgot what other villains were there, but it was just not just a bunch of B-listers. Yeah, pretty much. But like some heavy hitters. But with some heavy hitters. You have Norman Osborn, Green Goblin, and you have Matt Gargan, who was Scorpion. Like each one of them can only be one Spider-Man almost. Yeah. Yeah. Spe- yeah. And now, and Matt Gargan with the Venom Symbiote. Now, Matt Gargan with the Venom Symbiote was never as strong as Eddie Brock with the Venom Symbiote because Eddie Brock and the Venom Symbiote actually coexisted whereas Matt Gargan and the Venom symbiote never actually coexisted. So it's a self fight just yeah. to survive and then do anything. Yeah. But yeah, Spider Man ends up defeating him and whatnot. Wow, so Norman's done a lot of shit. Like he can he can pull a lot of strings even from prison then. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Norman Osborne is highly intelligent. He's not Doctor Octopus intelligent. Uh, he's not like uh, he's not Tony Stark intelligent. But he's up there. He's up there. He's business intelligent, and he's intelligent with uh, chemical warfare. And he has his, he's no slouch in the engineering field as well. Well, it seems like it. Huh? But he's, he, he's not a Tony Stark level engineer, and he's not Bruce Banner level chemist. No. no. Um, it was an accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the serum did make him much more intelligent than what he was, and he was already pretty intelligent. Yep. Yeah. High level super genius. Yeah, and as I said, stronger than Spider Man, uh, speed on par with Spider Man, with with gadgets that would make Batman jealous. Well, not really, but like on, on par, pretty close. Yeah, pretty close. I mean, he's got the cool Halloween theme going. Yeah, that's right. Uh, which is funny because when I was uh, when the Death Battle did the Spider Man versus Batman, they actually mentioned that. Um, one big advantage Spider-Man over had over Batman is that Spider-Man was already used to fighting somebody with a bunch of uh, weapons that are designed very similarly to Batman, and that's Green Goblin. Green Goblin's weaponry is very similar to Batman's weaponry. Ah, uh, so he's kind of like, I'm used to this shit. Well, yeah, it's like, oh, batteries. I've seen those before. Yeah, this isn't new. No. Oh, oh is this uh, Yeah, it's yeah, smoke bomb. Right. Oh, is this a high tensile strength uh, rope that's supposed to keep me tied up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> oh, I love this shit. <laughs> you see Spidey doing bondage at night. <laughs> yeah. And ultimately, this got out what I wanted to talk about with Norman Osborn. Is I wanted to display why Norman Osborn is such a great villain, and it's not only that it's not. People always favor like Venom and Carnage and whatnot because they're, they're powerful. Yeah, yeah, they'll go blow for blow. Yeah, but Norman Osborn is a manipulator. He's intelligent. If you want to look at um, alignments from D and D perspective, yeah. Norman Osborn is neutral evil. He is true evil. He does whatever he wants. For, uh, everything he does is evil. It doesn't matter if it's in the main name of law or chaos because. 
he is very chaotic in nature. The guy's insane and don't try to argue he's not. The guy's completely off his rocker. He's insane. Yeah. But at the same time, he ends up, you'll find out in, in our next episode of uh, when we do the next part of Harry, uh, Norman Osborn, he ends up being in charge of Hammer. He ends up being in charge of S.H.I.E.L.D. And he ends up like almost taking over the entire United States, really. He's got great leadership capability, but yeah. his, uh, his ego gets in the way. And yeah, his... and his insanity, because he yeah. is insane. His insanity does get in the way. Absolutely. Yeah. It's hard to keep uh, all your chips on the board and some of them keep jumping around. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I bet you anything he'd be safe. He's completely covered his skin. is not uh, exposed. So, yeah, if uh, although he does get, his costume does get ripped up a lot. And every time he gets beaten up, like his face gets, unco- uh, like, his, like his mouth gets uncovered or his eye gets uncovered or something. Yeah. So, but you, sh- yeah, he's pretty safe. He's one of those characters who would be safe from COVID-19. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we're all safe. Yeah. <laughs> Although, granted, if Peter Parker was an actual thing, he probably would cover uh, would have figured out a uh, cure for COVID nineteen by now. Yeah, <laughs> let's get real here. There's a lot of good brains <coughs> in the MC. Yeah, they would have figured something out. Yeah. So is that where we're cutting it for today, on Norman? I think so because there's way too much to talk about from we'll do. afterwards. Well, he's got too many teams. Yeah, too many teams, and so much has happened to him since Civil War. Yeah, and so far everything we're talking about is. Everything that led up to Civil War, and there's a lot that happens with him after Civil War. Cool. We'll pump the brakes there for today, and then who do we got on the burner for next week? It's a good question, Katie. Um, so we have a couple options. Do mm-hmm. we want to continue with Norman Osborn, or we could move back to DC? Let's probably break it up. We'll continue Norman later. Sure. Do we want to start Rob, like uh, Dick Grayson's Robin, or go with someone else next week? We do Dick Grayson because they are, do they do have the Teen Titans series going. We yeah. do want to keep it. Uh, we do want to keep it. Well, we could do Star Girl because they just released uh, um, the new series Star Girl. Oh, the poster for the new series, and I'd rather talk about it before me the uh, the media gets their hands on her. Yeah, I'd was... like to talk about her comic book origin before we get another Batwoman. Should I say where they've recast the actor by season two? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hopefully they... Like, I like Ruby Rose and everything, but I'm really hoping to get somebody who actually knows how to fight because there was way too many cuts and edits in the fight scenes in the first season of Bad Girl. It's just... You put that side-by-side side to the fight choreography they do in Arrow, and it's atrocious. It's it's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. So that, that could be an option that we do because yeah. I know she does have some history. And it would actually open some doorways to some of the other JLA members. Well, I was thinking... Dr. Fate's one I've been wanting to do for a while. Well, that's what I'm thinking of doing is... I don't know if there's enough on Stargirl to fill in the entire... I I was thinking maybe we could do the JLA. Um, Because this gives us a way to segue into... Talk a little bit more. Because some of the characters... Some of the characters from the JLA we have mentioned already... This gives us a good way to talk about these characters a little bit more and introduce some other members of the JLA. So we've already talked a little bit about Jay Garrick and we talked a little bit about Alan Scott. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also we had a full episode on the Black Canary. Of course. And, so, and Black Canary was a member of the J, uh, uh, the, uh, the JLA and also uh, Shazam as well. Mm-hmm. So we already talked about some members of the uh, JLA. So I think... Next week, if we talk about the other characters in the JLA, the core members of the JLA, so Stargirl, Dr. Fate, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Wildcat. Uh, we've mentioned Wildcat some big as well. names, though. You might want to do those standalones. Big names. I, they're big enough names, but not enough. But I don't. None of them will be full of, uh, fill a full a full hour. Not Doctor Dr. Fate. Fate Doctor Fate. Doctor Fate. Can't. Why don't we do Doctor Fate next week, and then we'll do whoever's remaining. We could well. You wanted to do Stargirl before they ran the show, yeah, right? Yeah, see, that's the thing. I want to do her before the show gets out. So yeah, we could do a JLA next week, okay. and just like like just like I said, we'll talk about Doctor Fate, just like we'll talk about Jay Garrick and Alan Scott as right. well. So yeah. it's not like, like we, it's a full origin of Doctor Fate, but we yeah. will mention Doctor Fate. Like cool. We covered House of M after we previously talked about a bunch of people involved. Yeah, because you guys course. kept referencing it. Yeah. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> 
All right, Mom. I'll see you next week. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. We'll stay healthy. You as well. Yeah. So you heard it. We'll try and do JLA next week. Yeah. We'll go from there. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, I believe my parents are going to be here next week. Oh, are we going to take a one week off? Kenny, are you going to fill? I have no idea what the JLA is. Okay. okay. What, could, what, what do you want to do next week? Yeah, we can always do that two weeks from now. Um, give me an eight bigger. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll run an ad as Kenny decides. Yes. <laughs> stay tuned for a moment. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll post it we'll post it on Facebook and on Instagram when we figure out what the next episode is gonna be. How about that? Exactly. Sounds good guys. Thanks for tuning in for episode eighteen of Worlds Collide. I'm Justin. And I'm Mitch. And we're tuning out. Take Cheers. care guys.